Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution is about the Declaration of Principles and State Policies. So for the principles, we have Section 1, the Philippines is a democratic and republican state. Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. So if you will be asked, just like what happened in the 2000 bar exams, number one pa naman, cite at least three provisions of the Constitution that need to be amended or revised to effect the change from unitary to federal and briefly explain why, then you can cite Section 2 or Section 1 rather of Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution. So instead of the Philippines being a democratic and republican state, then it should be now changed into the federal democratic state, our form of government. Again, remember the form of the government of the Philippines, it is democratic and republican. Democratic understood as participatory democracy, people can act directly and not through their representatives. How about the Republican? Our form, the gover our form of the government is a Republican. It is run by the people through their chosen leaders. Kaya nga dapat you elect or you choose your leaders wisely because it is run by the people but through their chosen leaders or through their chosen senators, president, congressman. And in turn, these leaders are accountable to the sovereign will of the people. So how do you manifest republicanism? You manifest it through the through this one. First, our ours is a government of laws and not of men. Number two, the rule of the majority, especially in elections, the rule is majority. Three, the accountability of public officials. Four, the Bill of Rights. Mahigpit ang ating Bill of Rights. Dapat masunod. Five, legislature cannot pass irrepealable laws. And of course, the separation of powers. And last is the delegation of powers. Our source is Natura. For separation of powers, recall Article 6, Article 7, and Article 8. Yan yung legislative judicial and then the executive department and relate it also to the principle of blending of powers as well as the principle of checks and balances. So by this time, especially if you are taking the bar exams, alam nyo na dapat ang keywords. 2009 bar Related to our topic of separation of powers, tingin agad sa tanong is the grant of authority to the Oversight Committee to screen beneficiaries constitutional. Let's look at the facts. The Poverty Alleviation and Assistance Act was passed to enhance the capacity of the most marginalized families nationwide. So, kagaya lang nang nangyari sa atin noong 2020 and 2021, yung ayuda. A financial assistance scheme called Conditional Cash Transfer was funded 500 million pesos by the Congress. What is the problem here? One of the provisions of the law gave the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee the authority to screen the list of the beneficiary families that is supposed to be the work of the DSWD. So, Mang Pandoy, who is a resident of Smoky Mountain in Tondo, question the authority of the committee. So is this provision constitutional? Answer is definitely no. That is unconstitutional. Bakit? Because of the principle of separation of powers. Ano nga ba ang trabaho ng legislative department? Gagawa lang sila ng batas. Sino ang mag implement Sino ang mag execute that is the work of the executive branch of the government. Therefore, this is unconstitutional. Hindi pwedeng ang Congress is mag screen ng list ng beneficiary families. Let's go to delegation of powers, a bar topic. What is the rule? The rule of non-delegation of legislative power. What is the principle behind delegata potestas non potest delegari? What has been delegated can no longer be delegated. What is the general rule? The general rule is only Congress can exercise legislative powers, but that is only the general rule because 
there are exceptions. Number one is delegation to the people through initiative and referendum, delegation of emergency powers to the president, delegation of tariff powers to the president, delegation to the admin bodies, take note of subordinate legislation. Ano ba iyang subordinate legislation? You have to differentiate that because that is the rule making of the admin bodies and last is the delegation to the local governments and still about delegation of legislative power what is the rule there is a valid delegation of legislative power when it passes the test ano yung mga test na yon number one is the completeness test and number two sufficient standard test so, 2005 bar exam question explain completeness test and the sufficient standard test. So, from the word itself, completeness, ano ang sabi? The law must be complete. Bakit? So that when it leaves the legislature, there is nothing left to do for the delegate except to enforce it. How about your sufficient standard test? For it to be sufficient, Dapat ang batas should map out the boundaries of the authority of the delegate. How can he do that? He should define the legislative policy and also in the law, he should indicate the circumstances under which it is to be pursued and effected. In 2016, number 8, letter A, Explain the completeness test and sufficient standard test. So, ito yung example ng palagi kong sinasabi that look at the question first. Because here in letter A, even if you will not read the facts, you can answer already your letter A. So, it will save you time. How about letter B? Does the assailed portion of section 8 of PD 910 hurdle the two tests? Ano ba yung section 8? Section 8 is about all fees, revenues, and receipts of the board from any and all sources shall form part of a special fund to be used to finance energy resource development and exploitation programs and projects of the government and for such other purposes as may be hereafter directed by the president. So, ito yung kini-question na provision because this provision is an undue delegation of legislative power. It gives the president unbridled discretion to determine the purpose for which the funds will be used. So, do you agree? Did it pass the two tests? Answer is definitely no. Masyado nga namang very wide ang discretion ng presidente. 2002, number 17, bar exams, there is a law passed creating a Department of Human Habitat and in that law, it authorized the Department Secretary to promulgate IRR. Also, in that law, it declared that a violation of the IRR would be punishable as a crime and the Department Secretary has the authority to prescribe penalty for such violation. Can the Department Secretary prescribe penalty? Answer is definitely no, because the fixing of the penalty for criminal offenses is an exercise of legislative power and it cannot be therefore delegated. The law itself must prescribe the penalty. 2005 bar exam question number two. This is very similar to what we just read. Question is the provision or is the proviso granting the court the authority to impose a penalty or imprisonment in its discretion constitutional? Ano ba itong provision na pinag-uusapan? This is your section 32 of Republic Act number 4670. What is section 32? If there is a person who shall willfully interfere restrain or coerce any teacher, then he shall, upon conviction, be punished by a fine of not less than 100 pesos nor more than 1,000 pesos or by imprisonment in the discretion of the court. So, in the discretion of the court. So, is this provision constitutional or is this allowed? Answer is definitely no. The provision is unconstitutional. This cannot be allowed because it vests in the court a power and a duty that is essentially legislative in nature. And when you apply this, 
it does violence to the rules on separation of powers as well as the non-delegability of legislative powers. Because again, recall your Article 6, your Article 7, and your Article 8. Recall also the principle of checks and balances.